Prior to 2006, if a celestial object orbited the Sun and appeared as a bright point of light in the night sky, it was considered a planet. Pluto on its discovery in 1930 certainly met this informal criteria, but after decades as a planet, the International Astronomical Union controversially stripped Pluto of its planetary status in 2006 to that of a dwarf planet. So welcome and join me, the Cosmic Skipper, as we look at why the reclassification of Pluto was necessary and what objects we now recognise as dwarf planets in the solar system. Between Mars and Jupiter, we have a region of space known as the Asteroid Belt, where we find our first dwarf planet, Ceres. This object is the only dwarf planet to be located in the inner solar system, and holds the distinction of being the largest object in the Asteroid Belt. It is also the smallest of the dwarf planets, at just 592 miles wide. Even so, it still accounts for about one-third of the belt's total mass. Ceres likely has a solid core, icy mantle and rocky crust, with a surface speckled in bright salt deposits, possibly remnants of briny water seeping through. These deposits have raised questions about Ceres's watery origins, and with it there is a surprising potential for this object to support life. The trans-Neptunian region of space known as the Kuiper Belt includes Pluto and three other dwarf planets whose discoveries eventually played a significant role in the demise of Pluto's status as a planet. Each of these dwarf planets has an inclination well above the ecliptic plane and so have a great vantage of the solar system as they look in. Haumea, at a distance of 4.6 billion miles from the Sun, does so at an angle of 28.2 degrees above the ecliptic plane. It stands out for its rapid rotation, completing a full spin in just four hours, making it one of the fastest spinning objects in the solar system. This high speed rotation has given it an unusual elongated shape, as it is 1442 miles on its longest axis. The discovery of rings around Haumea has only added to Haumea's intrigue and uniqueness. A similar distance from the Sun is Marki Marki, and at 28.96 degrees above the ecliptic plane it represents the second brightest object in the Kuiper belt after Pluto. It has never been observed at close range so we know relatively little about it, but we do know it has a diameter of 886 miles with a relatively long 22 and a half hour day and has a moon called MK2. It has also a reddish brown surface where we've detected traces of frozen methane and ethane. The closest Kuiper Belt dwarf planet to the Sun is Pluto, which size-wise is roughly two-thirds the size of Earth's moon. NASA's New Horizon mission has revolutionised our understanding of Pluto's geology, where it discovered surprisingly youthful mountains, a frozen nitrogen heart and red tholin patches on the surface of this distant world. Scientists also believe Pluto might have a subsurface ocean due to the presence of certain surface features such as a chaotic terrain that could be explained by the expansion of water as it freezes. It also has five moons, which were likely born from a cosmic collision. Eris, the fifth dwarf planet, is the furthest out from the Sun at 6.7 billion miles, and at 44 degrees above the ecliptic plane has a view like no other of the whole solar system. Discovered in 2005, this dwarf planet marked the beginning of the end for Pluto as a planet, as both shared similarities that made scientists question what a planet is. Both are nearly the same size, with Eris diameter 30 miles smaller at 1448 miles. It is thought both have rocky compositions along with various types of ice such as water, nitrogen and methane, indicating a similar composition. Driven by the discovery of Eris and other objects, scientists started to raise questions about what truly constituted a planet. In essence, these new objects became problematic, as traditional planet definitions, based on observational characteristics of orbiting the Sun and appearing as a bright point of light in the night sky, were seen as inadequate criteria for planetary definition. As a result, the International Astronomical Union, the IAU, the organisation responsible for naming and classifying celestial bodies, saw the need for a better definition, and so in 2006 voted on criteria for a celestial body to be considered a planet. 
The object must orbit the Sun. The object must have sufficient mass for its gravity to cause it to assume a nearly round shape known as hydrostatic equilibrium. The object must have cleared its orbit of other debris, meaning it becomes gravitationally dominant in its orbital neighbourhood and doesn't share its orbit with other sizeable objects. Pluto meets the first two criteria, but unfortunately it does not meet the third, as its orbit intersects with other Kuiper Belt objects, and in doing so it suggests it is not gravitationally dominant in its neighbourhood. In other words, Pluto had not cleared its orbit of other debris, and so under this new definition, Pluto was controversially reclassified as a dwarf planet. This decision has proved so controversial that it has sparked debate within the scientific community and the general public ever since, where there are often calls for Pluto to be reinstated as a planet. What do you think? Should Pluto have remained a planet, or were the IAU right to reclassify as a dwarf planet? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks again though for watching, I've been the Cosmic Skipper, and if you've enjoyed the video then please consider liking and subscribing for more space related content.